Today, I made one of the biggest mistakes that any rookie trader would make, and that was just not being patient. But fortunately, patience also helped me pay off and turned a red trade into a green trade. So I'm going to tell you exactly how the whole process, process of this trade uh, went down and how you can learn from this all coming up. Yeah, guys, so I was actually read right out of the gate uh, of the market open today on Expedia. Expedia came out with news and I'll explain exactly how all of this came to be and how I was able to turn a red trade into a green trade and used and how the lack of patience turned against me. But then I was able to use that uh, for my own benefit, turning this trade into a green one uh, all coming up. But first, I want to welcome you to this channel. Hi, my name is Brad and this is Own the Chaos. The stock market is a crazy and chaotic place to try to learn how to day trade, but I've made it my mission to help you own it. So if you want to see more content such as this, I highly encourage you to subscribe to this channel and hopefully this video will receive a thumbs up for you if you learned something today. So let's get to it. So one of the stocks that I traded today was Expedia. And so Expedia came out with some great news. And actually I wanted to give a shout out to one of the folks in our mentorship. His name is in the chat is Blade Runner. Don't want to give his full name away, but his name is Blade Runner in there. And he actually during our, our morning mentorship shouted this one out said, hey, there's a volume spike alert on Expedia. So then we went and looked further into this and then discovered that there is some pretty powerful news that came out. So if you come over here, I'll share my screen with you and I'm showing you here Expedia. So Expedia stock source after CEO and CFO are ousted in disagreement with the, with the board. And just to go further, shares of Expedia Group soared more than 7% Wednesday after the online travel service company surprised the market with the news that its CEO and CFO are out after, after about two years in their roles following a disagreement with the board of directors on their strategy. Ultimately, senior management and the board disagreed on strategy, Diller said in a statement. A re reorganization planned to put in place earlier this year resulted in a material loss of focus on our current operations and led to the disappointment third quarter results and a lackluster short-term outlook, he said. The board disagreed with that outlook as well and the departing leadership's vision for growth, strongly believing the company can accelerate growth in 2020. That divergence necessitated a change in the management. Expedia shares plummeted 27% on November 9th, a day after the company posted weaker than expected earnings for the third quarter, marking its worst single day performance on record. Management told analysts on its earnings call that the company dealt with incremental weakness in SEO volumes and a related shift to high cost marketing channels. Now I'm gonna bring you over to TD Ameritrade's Think or Swim. And as you can see here, they did have poor earnings. They were expected 390, actual was 338. So it was a pretty substantial uh, dip difference on those and so that's why they saw the significant drop uh and so now that the ceo is out uh, investor sentiment looks to be a little bit better and i was telling my folks in the mentorship uh that it, it looked as if this completely broke out over that 101 or 100 uh, resistance there and was actually continuing pre-market. So let's go actually go back to the one minute chart. So I want to give you a clear picture of actually what happened today and how I was how I actually made a pretty bonehead decision buying this stock when I did and fortunately had the wherewithal to hold through a little bit of a panic attack. So what I did here, uh, we were watching this pre-market, told my folks, hey, listen, this looks like to be an area right around here around 105 that could be a potential pullback area. So I told my folks in the community, I said, hey, listen, look, this looks to be a decent pullback area around 105. I'm going to wait to see if this actually does end up pulling back. But what did I do? I did not actually do that. I saw this breakout over its pre-market highs. And I said to myself and others in the group, I said that with this volume and it breaking over its pre-market highs, this actually looks like it could potentially continue here. And so what I ended up doing was buying this around 106 and then the bottom dropped out. It actually ended up breaking the support level and then continued to come down, made a really boneheaded decision, but I didn't panic. And that was the, the key here. What I told folks, I said, listen, I'm looking for this to, to break 102. If this actually ends up breaking 102, then I'm going to have to suffer that loss. But I'm going to stay patient here. I'm not going to panic. And I'm going to see this trade through and see if, in fact, this will either bounce off of this support level or continue to go up. And sure enough, it did. It did pull back here, actually went up and, and crushed its previous high right at the open, went all the way up to highs of 109.32. And I was able to make uh, around $250 or so on this trade. 
It was scary though, because I was down quite a bit on this trade. And so that's the lesson to be taken from this. Buying anything right out the open is a pretty dumb decision. It's always a wise decision to just be patient and wait on the trade. For me, it was such a really great catalyst. There was enough volume in there. And so initially my impulse decision was to actually buy this as it broke over those pre-market highs because it did look like at the beginning that it was going to continue. But had I just waited this out, and really the, the ironic about, thing about this was is that I actually told my folks, listen, this looks like it could come back to the 102, 101 area. And the ironic thing about all of this is that I actually told my mentorship folks that, listen, this looks like it could have potential to come back to the 101, 102 area. So look for a bounce there to make your initial entry if you haven't gotten in already pre-market. And I went against exactly everything that I said that I was planning on doing pre-market and then threw it all out the window as soon as the bell rang. Here's what happened. The emotions got the best of me and uh, I was had the fear of missing out out and that's just the characteristic of trading that is trading sometimes that and just ends up happening to you fortunately for me because i am a full-time day trader it doesn't happen to me as often as uh, a lot of beginner day traders but that's why i wanted to bring this uh, perfect example of uh, you know you're rushing into something making an impulse or emotional decision when it comes to your trades that uh, you really kind of need to take home but that's why i thought this was going to be a perfect example for today's video and a good topic for you to go over especially if you're just starting out if you're a beginner trader was that i acted on impulse i was not patient enough to let this trade play out and let the setup play out for me to make my perfect entry the first part of this was that I was impatient and I got in on the fear of missing out. And then I ended up making a, a red trade, you know, in the beginning. I was pretty red after I bought in almost at the high of the day at that point. Once it broke over that uh, pre-market high, it looked as if to my eye, to my impatient eye, was that, you know, it was going to continue to go higher. But in typical fashion and this always happens in the stock market right at the open when you see something that has a pretty positive catalyst and it spikes up pre-market there's always going to be some sort of pullback but i didn't have the patience to do that today so that i bought in at 106 right there uh much higher than i should have bought in at and then it started to come down and then it came down right around that 102 area exactly where i anticipated it bouncing and i just wasn't patient enough to let that play out but the other side of this patience play was that I didn't want to suffer a loss because I wanted to see if that bounce was actually going to be in it. So in a way, I stuck with that plan and thinking to myself, okay, if this can't hold this 101, 102 area, if this can't hold this support, then I will end up having to take a loss. But I didn't let my emotions get the best of me and waited this out and had to grind this trade out to see if I was actually gonna turn it into a green trade. Sure enough, I did, was able to get out of that one. Uh, but you know, again, that was just one of those things where you have to get control of your emotions. So initially, I let my emotions get the best of me. Then I had to sit back and say, okay, now I need to get get a hold of myself and, and play this out and, and stick to the original plan that I had in the first place. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, I made a green trade and that's great and all, but I could have made such a much better trade. There's a there's this common misconception or misnomer that, you know, green is green, right? And in a way, yes, green is always green. Green trades are, are awesome, they're great. But had I just stuck to my original plan and stuck with my discipline, I would have made a monster trade on this. This could have been a $1,000 plus trade had I just stuck with my plan and not initially reacted emotionally. So while green trades are always good, there's definitely ways that you could have gone about it better. And this is definitely one of those things where it's like, yeah, I'm kind of happy that I made a green trade and I'm a little bit relieved given that the re initial reaction at the open, but I could have made such a much better trade that I would have been way happier with had I just stuck with my original plan. But that's how it goes sometimes. And I wanted to kind of give you that key takeaway, making sure that you stay patient and, and really kind of buying right at the open isn't always the best idea. Stay with your plan and, and have that patience to, to see the setup, wait for your setup and wait for the perfect time and not fall into that fear of missing out when it comes to making your trades. So I hope that helped you and provided you with some insight. If it did, I certainly would appreciate that good old thumbs up. 
And if you want to see more content such as this, hit that subscribe button. Uh, and if you are interested in checking out the mentorship that I was talking about earlier, the links are down in the description below. I highly encourage you to go check that out. And that's going to do it for me, guys. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate the support. We are almost at 10,000 subscribers. Can you believe it? It's been a pretty awesome ride so far. And that's going to do it for me, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I will see you all before the bell. And B. Smith is out entering into a relationship if you if you're dating someone and before you get serious you're like okay let's agree at the point with which we decide to end things right yeah it'd be an interesting conversation because there's nothing bad going on so you could probably have a good discussion like okay well if we have more bad days than good days 